So hello everyone, I'm here again, Erika of the storytelling .com, and you are watching No One Has to Be Alone. Hopefully everything will be all right now. It's wonderful to have tech support right in the next room, even if I had to interrupt his sales meeting because as usual, he managed to find, Adam managed to find what's the problem. So yeah, for some reason, my computer after a restart uh, connected to our slow Wi-Fi and not the super fast 5G one. So Zuzi is here and Sarah and Teresa and Sherry and Liv and Corinne. <laughs> and it seems I am commenting. I am not commenting that much better. <laughs> that must be. <laughs> Someone from the team, I am suspecting my sister, Yvette, <laughs> and Kota, and Janine, and Tanya, and Viveka, and Elena. And Elena says that it's good now. And Marianske, and Maria. And Dev says that it's really good now. <laughs> Kay, Donna, Nori, Claire, Cheryl. Ula, Petra, Kimberly, Chloe. <laughs> Corinna says that my coffee cup grew. Well, in fact, there is written coffee on it, but I have a nice uh, spicy tea in it this time. My coffee cup is empty. I emptied it many, many times today. <laughs> so... Thank you so much, ladies, for your patience. <coughs> and welcome to the first No One Has to Be the Lone live beating video of 2021. Wishing you all one more time a beautiful, peaceful, hopefully more peaceful year than the previous one. Lots of happiness, health, and hopefully more time with your loved ones and lots of creative ideas <laughs> so everyone is saying that the picture is better now so yeah indeed we found the problem and today on the during the first video of the year we are going to beat the sherry picking earrings the printable file as always is already available at the usual place so it's the storytelling jeweler.com slash no one has to be the long slash so as always two options you can either download it for free and then it's my helping hand to you during the current crisis or you can decide to purchase the pattern for, for five euros or maybe even place an order for the bids you need for it and this way support the broadcast and big 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 thank you to all of you <laughs> who have who have been with us during the uh, previous year and are still here and big 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 hugs for all of you for your for your support, for being here, for sharing your jewels, for your comments, for your orders, for recommending us to your beating friends. Thank you so much. So today we are going to beat the sherry picking earrings or I am beating the sherry picking earrings, but you can actually, of course, transform it into a little pendant into a bracelet. The bracelet can be connected in two ways that you can either turn the little motifs that the sides are diagonally or you can connect them one side to another. So you can either connect two motifs by the points of the square or by the sides of the square. I also started to brainstorm about a bigger necklace. So what you can maybe do if you want a bigger uh, pendant that you can connect four of the little motifs 
to each other. So I am really looking forward to see your variations because you don't stop amazing me and I always see so many beautiful versions and it's wonderful to see you are getting creative. And Bonnie is asking about the necklace. So thank you, Bonnie. I'm glad that you like it. And it's called the Milky Way, full of stars. And it was actually the 24th little present or surprise in the storytelling advent calendar. And you can now find it between the tutorials on our page, the Milky Way. And Kata already beaded a beautiful necklace and also a very nice variation of earrings from it. So Bonnie, if you would like to see the variations, then you can search for Milky Way in the Storytelling Beading Club. And yeah, one more time, <laughs> I already thanked you for your lovely messages and postcards and emails in the first video, but I'm going to delete that. And I, I, I really wanted to emphasize this, that I'm very, very grateful for all your, all your kind messages. Thank you so much. And I hope that you already have your beads and material prepared for today. And let's check what do we need for the cherry picking. I'm ca I can't look forward, by the way, to some real life cherry picking. I'm, I'm really more of like a spring and summer girl. So that's the season I'm looking forward to. And what are we going to need for cherry picking? We are going to need some gem dual beads on my original version the pink ones, then you might be surprised, but you will need some quarter tila beads. And they are actually hidden on the back side of the motif. So that's why they are not visible on the picture. And because of this, it actually doesn't really matter that what kind of color of the quarter tilas are, because they are really not really uh, barely visible so if you have some leftover pieces from a color that did not become your favorite then this is a very good way of using them up you will also need some three millimeter flyer polished beads i used this picasso pale turquoise and i really really like it it's not, uh, not available now in the eShop, but I already reordered it because I want to continue playing with them. You will also need something in the middle of the motif. And you might have noticed that I kind of like Sue on rhinestones from Preciosa. And this is a four millimeter or SS16 Sue on rhinestone in the middle. I know that some of you mentioned that you don't have the rhinestone at the moment. Uh, and in that case, you can substitute it, for example, for a combination of number 15 and 11 seed bead. But I did not test that version. So you will have to experiment a little bit, but I don't think that it should be a big obstacle if you don't, if you don't have the rhinestone. Or if you like this version, then of course you can find them at the storytellingjeweler.com. And besides that, if you like it, then you can also hang a drop, some kind of drop at the bottom. I really like, I discovered last year, these glass drops in metal settings, and they are available in many different shapes and sizes and colors. And it's super easy to attach them because they are already in a metal setting and they have a little loop at the top. So you don't have to do like many tricks, but it's very easy to hang them at the bottom of your earring or your pendant. And besides that, of course, seed beads, you will need, I always use Miyuki, and you will need number 15 and number 11 round seed beads, and also some number 11 
miyukita de cask. And of course, depending on the type of the jewel that you are making, you will need an earring hook, or maybe you want to make a pendant, and in that case, you need to either use a bail or bead a bail, or if a bracelet, then of course, a clasp. And in the meanwhile, Stella joined us. Hello, Stella. And she says, many wishes for a new year with health and all those beautiful things that we haven't seen or had yet for all. Hugs from Greece. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you for being with us uh, today, Stella. Is it your first time, by the way? And Lynn says, my friend at the local farmer's market has a 40-year-old cherry farm. I get her fresh big cherries all summer long. And cherries are a natural sleeping medicine, natural melatonin. Eat them before bed and it will help you sleep better. That's a good advice. <laughs> Maybe I can balance out the insane amount of coffee I drink with some cherries. <laughs> And Joanna has some internet trouble. I'm so sorry. And for Stella, it is indeed her first. No one has to be alone. Then welcome, Stella. Wow. Good beginning of 2021, right? So, ladies. If you have your beads already, and if you have downloaded the tutorial, then let's get started. I will show you also my beading mat. I was working hard before the broadcast to declutter my beading mat. I showed you on Tuesday during coffee time with Erica, that I was actually working hard during the holidays and I beaded many, many, many different designs for you already for the Friday beadings. So after that, you can imagine that how messy my beading mat was. So I, uh, I was working actually on two things in the afternoon besides drawing the tutorial, decluttering my bead mat and I put back everything where it belongs from my beading mat, not just, you know, sweeping them to one side or like starting a new bead mat. Not starting a new bead mat is also, it also has a specific reason because this is my last kind of clean one without big coffee stains. <laughs> and I was also collecting my jewels from 2020. I want to make a picture of all of them. And it's not so easy. <laughs> so yeah, it, it, I had a lot to do before the broadcast. And <laughs> it's so nice to see you all welcoming Stella to our crazy beading family, as Sarah says. And let's get started. I always work with 0 0.12 millimeter or 4 LB fire line. I really like the new black satin variation. I'm using up my small gray one, but afterwards I will only purchase the black satin as it doesn't leave marks on my beads or on my beading mat. And I am using a very, very, very uh, little crooked uh, needle. Some of, some of my needles are very crooked and this is just a little bit crooked. So <laughs> the best one I found. And I will start by picking up four pieces of gem duo beads and four pieces of quarter tila beads interchangeably. And Elena is asking, there are so many new designs from you, Erica. Is it even possible to make a photo of all of them? 
Eleanor, I have to admit that probably there will be several photos because they will not fit on one picture. <laughs> so after I picked up the four gem dual beads and the four quarter tila beads, I will leave a tail of about 10, 12 centimeters or five, six inches. And I bead through all of the beads through the same holes one more time in order to join them into a circle. I try to be careful and turn the beads in a way that the bumps of the gem duos and the bumps of the quarter tilas face the same way. With the gem duos, it's, it's really important, and with the quarter tilas, if you see the bumps, then make sure that they face the top. If you don't see them so well, then don't worry about them so much. After beading through all of the beads one more time, I try I tie a knot between the working end and between the tail. And at this moment, I am beading through both holes of uh, the nearest quarter tila, the one that is next to my knot. So I want to end up exiting the outside hole of a quarter tila, and I will be now connecting the open, the outside holes of the beads. And ladies, if you have any, any questions in the meanwhile, then please make sure to write it in a comment and I will do my best to keep an eye on your questions. And we can also welcome Ludka in the meanwhile. So, and... By the way, I I got this handy little butterfly from Nitty, and I can put my needles in it. I really like it. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, in the second step, sorry, I'm still struggling a bit with my with my camera. Exiting an outside hall. Oh, Chloe is asking a question in the meanwhile. Does the rhinestone need four holes or two, Erica? So the rhinestone that I am using, it has two holes that meet in a cross shape on the back side. The rhinestone has a little metal setting, but you can use something that has only one hole and you will you will beat through the same hole both times when we need to cross it. And Yvette is here, and thank you so much, big sister, for helping out Bonnie with the tutorial. So, and now, when I am exiting the outside hole of a quarter tila, I will pick up a round 11 seed bead, and then I will pick up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven round 15 seed beads. And as you can see, I am working with a different color combination now. This was my first one, but I decided 
that this year I am going to try to make as many jewels in the new Pantone color combination for 2021, which is gray and yellow as possible. So <laughs> yeah, instead of finishing the other half of the earring, also because I don't have any more drops in this color, I will beat a yellow and gray cherry picking earring. So I am exiting the quarter tila. I picked up a number 11 and seven pieces of number 15 seed beads. And now I will bead through the open hole of the next gemmed wall, but in the opposite direction. So towards the quarter tila that I am exiting. And when I pull my thread, then you can see that the beads are nicely framing the top of the gem dual. And then I will skip the first two number 15 seed beads and I bead through the last five that I picked up. Now I pick up two more number 15 seed beads and a number 11 seed bead and I bead through the open hole of the next quarter tila. So I managed to frame the first gem duo already and I need to do the same three more times to frame all of the gem duos. Oh, and Kata says, Pantone 2021 here as well. That's so funny. <laughs> I'm super curious what kind of color combination exactly did you put together. I am not surprised at all that you really got the hang of it with your weakness for yellow, let's say. <laughs> So I think it's a re it's really a nice color combination. And as I saw all the great, all the beautiful jewels posted recently in the club in the color combination, I think I can say that even if it seemed at first that this is going to be a challenging one, so many of you really embraced it and made beautiful jewels in this color combination. And Vanessa is also here with us. Welcome, Vanessa. So again, when I was exiting the quarter tila, I picked up seven number 15 seed beads. I, uh, I picked up a number 11 seed bead, seven number 15 seed beads. And now I will skip the first two number 15 seed beads and I bead through the last five of them. And then I pick up again two number 15s, a number 11, and I bead through the next quarter tila. So I am halfway with framing my gem dual beads. And actually, I think that even if I wouldn't put on top the fire polished beads and the uh, rhinestone in the middle, even then it would be a really cute little motif. What do you think? Wanda is asking for the pattern. Hello, Wanda. Good to have you here. And Stacy, ladies, here is the link. And you can either buy it or download it. What's your preference? And all over again, one number 11, seven number 15s. And by now, I planned that 
I will count how many jewels did I make in 2020, <laughs> but I'm still in the process of, of digging them out from different boxes and drawers. And of course, my jewelry, my personal jewelry collection, because some of the jewels, well, they are put aside with the hope of a brighter future that one day they will be exhibited at the at a bead art fair and some of them they go directly to my personal jewelry stash and i am actually wearing them so i am still like <laughs> digging them out from several places and i don't know i think i made over like 40 or 50 pieces but yeah i can say i think that it was a lot more than i expected and i was really actually tempted to make a new year's resolution that i will try to make at least as many as in 2020 <laughs> but after several years of like really unfulfilled New Year's resolutions, I don't dare to make a New Year's resolution anymore. So I did not have one. I did not make one this year, even if I really like like new beginnings. Monday. I like Mondays. I'm weird. I like beginnings of month, whatever, early mornings. But I didn't make a New Year's resolution this year. I had an absolutely ridiculous New Year's resolution in, uh, in the previous year. And if you want, I will, I will tell you. But first, I would like to read your comments. Have you ever made a New Year's resolution? Do you like making one? Or you just don't like the idea of it? And if you make New Year's resolutions, do you usually keep them? Do you manage to keep them? Are they realistic or not? I'm, I'm super curious to, to read that. <laughs> and Yvette, thank you so much for helping out the ladies. In the meanwhile, I managed to finish framing my little motif with seed beads and I will continue to the second layer this is a super easy super fast jewel by the way so I hope that some of you will decide to make will decide to make full bracelets not just little earrings like me <laughs> and and uh, sherry says i never make resolutions <laughs> i can't keep them <laughs> and Di diana says never have any by age never will Ula says, not resolutions, ambitions. I like that. And what are your ambitions for 2021, Ula? And surely, this is beautiful. She says, I do a new word for the year now, since I wasn't sticking to the resolutions. My word for this year is peace. I think we really, really need a more peaceful year than the previous one. I hope that your that your word for 2021 will become a reality for all of us, surely. Niti says, my resolution for this year is survival. <laughs> Katie says, Erica's resolution, finish UFOs. I, 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 uh, that, that would be such a ridiculous notion of, uh, ambition of me to finish all my UFOs that I don't even dare to say something. <laughs> so, 
So my uh, previous year's resolution was that I want to have six a six pack. And I didn't manage, but still like, Somehow I thought that that's more realistic than finishing my UFOs. <laughs> that says something about my beating habits. <laughs> Maria says, I don't like to because I never accomplished them. Sarah says, don't make any no longer. I did promise to quit smoking for the third time a couple of years ago. I think it was 12 years ago now. And Sarah, after, after, after that third time, that third time, was that a successful New Year's resolution? I'm curious. Are you smoking now? And Elena says, I make the resolutions, and after the half of a year, I already don't remember them because it happens a lot during a year. So I just stopped to make them. Kay says, hello, Kay. I have made many in the past, never fulfilled. I have now given up for short-term goals. Hopefully this will work. <laughs> Ula says, more weed embroidery. That's a good one. <laughs> And Lynn has a very good one. She says, I make a vision board each year before New Year's and it really works. Uh, do you maybe want to tell us more that what is on your vision board this year? Chloe wants to read or listen to a, a new book a week. Kathy too. And Nora says, the earring is like a velvet pillow. Beautiful. Oh, I'm glad you like it, Nori. I'm looking forward to your combination. <laughs> Zuzi says, Facebook offered me a very funny memory today that says, you are a beater if your New Year's resolution is working with beats from your stash more. <laughs> We also know that one, finishing UFOs and working only from your stash, of course. And Sarah says, yes, no smoking. That's a good one, Sarah. Congrats on that. And Virginia says, mine is to keep my beading area cleaner by putting away items from the project as I finish the project. And Irena wants to do something creative every day. And Sarah is also up for weed embroidery. <laughs> so, and... Oh, and Zuzi says, I don't make resolutions, so I'm not disappointed later. I just try through whole year, small steps of overall improvement in any way of life. Means a lot more than one big thing that doesn't work. That's absolutely true. Yes, I think it makes more sense to make a decision that I will try to do some sports at least, like, for example, three times a week instead of having a six pack. <laughs> oh, Deb has a good resolution. She wants to bleed more. <laughs> and if I go back to my little pillow, as Nori called it, then I need to beat first to a number 11 before a quarter tila. And then I pick up a Miyuki Delica 11, I pick up a number 15 seed bead and another Miyuki Delica 11. And now I skip beading through the quarter tila, but I bead through all the seed beads on the edge. So my three little new beads, they will form a little V shape bending already a bit over the quarter tila beads, as you can see. When I was designing the cherry picking 
motive, then at the beginning, I wanted to make it a bit larger and I wanted to force this little V-shaped part outside like this and then connecting more beads to it. But I think that was the first time in my life that I decided that in my beading life that a smaller motif is better than a bigger one. And I ended up being super happy with the little earrings. Also, I think that it's a good warming up for the beading year. <laughs> And Elena says, my general idea of this year, find the way to enjoy it and have less stress by keeping beading. I think keeping, being creative and playing and spending time together, that's definitely a way how we can make even such strange times as we live now enjoyable and we can meet new people. And I really like how we can be proud of ourselves that we beaded some new jewels, we learned a new technique, a new stitch, and it's also very nice if we, for example, gift the beadwork to someone because then the happiness is multiplying. <laughs> And now I continued on the edge of my beadwork and I finished by beading through a number 15 seed bead between two Delica beads that I have just added. And I am going to add now the fire polished beads and the rhinestone in the middle. And please let me know that how is it going with you? How does your, uh, how is your uh, little motif coming together? If you are happy with it, if you have any questions, please let me know. And Joanna says, Elena Lazovic, I agree. I don't do resolutions, but I am trying to reduce things in my life that cause stress. I want to definitely be it more because that is my therapy and is not stressful. And now, exiting a number 15 seed bead, I pick up a 3 millimeter fire polished bead. I pick up a 4 millimeter Preciosa rhinestone and another 3 millimeter fire polished bead. And now, I am beading through the number 15 seed bead that is exactly opposite of the one that I am exiting. And when I pull my thread, then you see that the combination of the fire polish, the rhinestone and the other fire polished, it's exactly the distance between the two number 15s. And if you don't have the rhinestone, then this is the time that maybe you can put the combination of number 15, fire polished, number 11, fire polished, number 15. You will need to experiment a little bit and then you cross in the number 11 in the middle. And Magdab says, how about weight loss for the new year resolution? Oh, I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> After last year's fiasco of still not having a six pack, who cares about weight loss? I care about cookies. I had an espresso chocolate cookie today. <laughs> but good luck to everyone who, who has that resolution. And Susie says, I'm using Nebula Opacred Gem Duo from you and love it. Can't believe I'm actually beating with you ladies. 
Zuzi, so good to have you here. I know that you can't always join, and this is a super nice day. Also, Niti can be with us. She had a very busy period lately, and she's beading already the second motive today. <laughs> Lutka is asking if she can uh, use a chaton suvon. And indeed you can, Lutka. Maybe you will need to add an extra number 15. It depends how the distance works out. As the chaton is taller than the one I am using. But you can definitely, Anna, you can definitely try that. And Lynn says, you could design a bead embroidery project that we could work on for two, four weeks or for a month like travelers, so there would be no hurry to finish during the broadcast. Well, Lynn, let me say that you might have heard in the Seed Beats and More group where we were doing the traveler last year with Anita, in Anita's So there might be a new <laughs> bigger bead embroidery project coming for you. I would mark May in my calendar if you are looking forward to something like that. <laughs> and Marianske says, I don't have the four millimeter rhinestone, so I'm trying to Swirlowski crystal mesh and it works too. That was a great idea, Marianske. Ula says, no weight loss, that's depressing for me. More discipline. I want to beat every day and write every day. <laughs> I like your resolution, Sula. <laughs> And Shanin says, I don't have any quarter tillers, but the bar seems to have worked fine. That's also good to know. Thank you so much, Shanin. I beat it in the meanwhile, as you can see on picture number five, that after attaching the rhinestone through its first hole, I beat it back through the combination and then I continued on the edge of my little pillow to the next number 15 added in step four. And from that position, I pick up a three millimeter fire polished bead and I bead through the second hole of the rhinestone. Again, I pick up a three millimeter fire polished bead and I bead through the number 15 that is opposite of the one that I was exiting before starting to attach the second hole of the rhinestone. And now I bead back through everything, fire polished, rhinestone fire polished, and I bead through the number 15 that I was exiting before picking them up. So I have this little cross with the rhinestone in the middle. And Shirley says, I'm using a four millimeter rondel in the middle. Looks great. <laughs> and Joanna says, May, my calendar is noted. <laughs> That's when we, it will be like an anniversary of when we've met with many of you. As in May last year, I was teaching in the Seed Beads and More group for the first time, my most beloved technique, bead embroidery. So that's when we, get, uh, we got to know each other with many of you. And seeing your travelers was a <laughs> and reading your stories, that was a really, really nice experience. You know, I really liked that 
you were seeing from so many of you because it was not only beads, but most of you really beaded a story into the jewel. Many of the coins that you used in your embroideries, they brought back memories or they were gifts from people that you love or loved. So it was a really nice experience. And in the meanwhile, Eleanor says, hello, Eleanor, I have made my first pair of earrings, really interested in making a bracelet or necklace of several motifs. I'm looking forward to see that, Eleanor. See, like, this is so, so, so fast that making a bracelet, it's, I think, Kata, do you have a bracelet already made during the broadcast? I would not be entirely surprised. And Viveka is also ready with her earrings. And Deb says, as soon as I can get more rhinestones, I want to make a bracelet. This is a very pretty design. And Lynn says, okay, I will wait four more months. Pure torture. <laughs> Lynn, in the meanwhile, if you want, look up the tribute. Have you made the tribute ring already? If not, then you can pass the time with embroidering a little ring, for example. It's available on my YouTube channel. And Chloe says, wow, was it really May? I'm still catching up with the Pro Raw and Pro homework. Maybe it needs to be my New Year's resolution to finish this. That was actually in October, so you are not that late. Just a little bit. <laughs> Traveler was May, and then, then the Crow, Crow Pro was October. And Ula says, I really like the cherry picking pillow. There will be probably something light, larger in the making. <laughs> oh, and Lynn has done tribute already to the rings. <laughs> OK, then I really need to get going with my bead embroidery project <laughs> to bring more inspiration. <laughs> and now I beaded to the number 15 in exactly in the middle between two little V-shaped motifs. And I pick up five of the number 15s. In case that you are making a pendant or if you are working on a bracelet, then this might be different for you. But if you make an earring, then this is how you can make a little loop for your, for the earring hook that you pick up five of, five of the number 15 seed beads and you bead one more time through the seed bead in the middle between the two little v-shaped motifs and afterwards i want to bead on the edge exactly to the opposite side so then i can add the drop at the bottom of the earring And Dev says, I have six rhinestones, but I think I need seven for my wrist. Beater's nightmare. Of course, when you have six, then you need seven. If you have four, four last pieces of something, then you need a fifth one. What you can do, Deb, maybe that you can add some beads between the motifs. If you haven't done it yet, that maybe you can connect the little motifs by adding, for example, six millimeter fire polished beads between two motifs. Or if you turn the little motifs diagonally, so they are connected not by the sides, by, but, but by the corners, then you will need a bit less. And Marianska also loves this. Some ideas are forming based on this. That's wonderful. That's my favorite part when I can see that 
the basic motives that I come up with for the Friday beatings, that they sparkle your imagination and you take them to a whole new journey in your own style, not only with your own colors, but you maybe modify the shape. You add something to it. For example, a beautiful example, I'm sure that you remember, a beautiful example of taking the basic motifs, not one step further, but maybe like a hundred steps further is that fellow club member, Carpana, she beaded a full belt assembled from the motifs. <laughs> and Sharon is here. Hello, Sharon. And Diana is asking for the ring tribute indeed, Sarah says. And Diana, do you have the name of my, uh, do, uh, do you have the link for my YouTube channel? I'm happy to help if you need it. Beverly likes the pattern, but not her colors. <laughs> and Sherry is also looking forward to, to see everyone's versions. And now I am at the bottom of my motif and I pick up two number 15 seed beads. I pick up the drop, it's a yellow one, and two more number 15 seed beads. And then I bead four more times through the number 15 that I was exiting before picking up. Okay, I lost in the meanwhile the drop because the loop is a little bit open. So you need to be and the thread slide it through it so you need to be careful with it we will also find my round oh here are my round nose pliers i will push the loop a little bit to yes to close it And Lynn is going through the number 15 twice. I surely recommend to repeat the thread pass. Actually, there is one more step coming, step eight, when we repeat the thread pass. And you can beat also through the loops to, loops to strengthen the connection and through the seed beads on the edges. And Elena says, beautiful ornament. It already inspired me for some necklace. <laughs> I'm super curious, Elena. And Zuzi says, oh, so cute. A brooch maybe? Of course a brooch from you, Zuzi. <laughs> I would be disappointed if you haven't made a brooch from a motif that we are beading together. <laughs> Okay, and Diana has YouTube. Great, and thank you, Sarah, for your help. And Kata says, no bracelet this time, as I am doing another project and want to finish that before developing further this one. But I finished the earrings. <laughs> well, congrats for being so, you know, disciplined. <laughs> And Elena is happy with, with her colors and Ludka is also satisfied. And I am doing my final round now. I am just repeating the thread pass, but with one small dis uh, difference that I am going to skip the number 15 seed beads between the two Delica beads. So then it makes the little V a little bit sharper. Mm -hmm. 
so at the moment everyone is making earrings right no bracelets or pendants in the process at the moment right Nitty says i made a half rainbow pew combination <laughs> well is there is there orange in it in hungary uh, like in my i don't know if it's a hungarian saying or only in my area where i used to live but there was a saying that in puke there is always carrot so do you have do you have orange in your in your puke rainbow <laughs> And Susie already has an idea that which which uh, brooch base is she going to use? I'm curious, Susie. And Nora will also make a bracelet. <laughs> now he's working on some earrings ladies chloe is also going to make a bracelet <laughs> ladies do you maybe have any questions left about this or something else that i can help you with with your beading If not, then I would like to show you next week's earrings. And it says she haven't heard of the saying yet, so maybe it is like a Komarom area thing. <laughs> she has purple, soft pink, turquoise, and mint. Good colors, girl. Good colors. Kiki has her earrings. Oh, Susie is thinking about attaching a Rivoli. Sharon will make earrings. So, one thing, ladies, that I would like to improve during the next year, the second year of No One Has to Be the Long Videos is that i would really love to give you more time to prepare with your color combinations or maybe if you need some uh, new beads if you don't have everything in your stash then actually i am preparing two new things for you that might help you with it one is still a surprise but one, uh, the other one is that i would really like to give you more time with preparing and i want to publish the material lists earlier so during the holidays i was working super hard and i managed to design seven new patterns for you and we had a little bit of voting in the storytelling beating club over the last week and we decided that in what order are we going to bead the new designs. I had the, I, I fixed the beginning and the end because I wanted to start with this simple one as I'm a bit overwhelmed with yeah, company beginning of the year stuff. And I wanted to leave the frozen flowers bracelet to the end because it has some teacup bits which are actually optional for the top but i wanted to give you as much time as possible with ordering them if you would like to and next week friday we are going to beat the ice flowers earrings again it is an earring that is based on motifs so this is just one possible variation so my kind of earrings shoulder dusters with a glass drop at the bottom but you can make it shorter you can make it 
even longer, of course. You can make a necklace, you can make a bracelet, you can combine it with other motifs. So it's super versatile and again, super quick. And what you are going to going to need for it, I listed the material for one piece of earrings like this. So for one uh, one uh, motif like this, uh, you will need half tila beads, a drop. That's again, that's optional for the bottom. You will need if you want the rhinestones in the middle. But as you can see, even without, this is the back side of mine, but even without the rhinestone, I think it's super cute. This is with some extra bling with the rhinestones. And this side is without the rhinestones. So I think both versions look great. And then all what you need besides these are some number 15 and number 11 round Miyuki seed beads and number 11 Miyuki delicas. And of course, if you want to make an earring like me, then you will need an earring hook. So, yeah. And we have everything available at the storytellingjeweler.com. And <laughs> I'm really happy to see that you like it. I can't wait to, to beat it with you. And Sarah says you can even put a rhinestone on the back. Absolutely. So if it happens that it turns a little bit, and of course it will turn because it's long, then you can maybe have like a different color of rhinestone on the back. Or you can have, for example, different shades that I think it would look really nice if you started with like, I'm, I'm thinking with colors what we have available, that for example, you start with white opal at the top, then you move on to light sapphire, sapphire opal, and then a turquoise one at the bottom. What do you think about that? I think it would look really, really nice. And I will publish this material list immediately so you can start preparing. And you can check already in the Storytelling Beading Club the other patterns that I have for you for the upcoming weeks. And soon they will all go up so you can, you can work ahead with your color combinations. And thank you so much for your attention today, ladies. It was really nice to be with you again. It was a great start of the year. And I am really looking forward to the after party in the Storytelling Beating Club. I love the energies after the broadcast when you are all publishing your work in progress or your finished jewelry pictures in the group. So I am looking forward. I'm wishing you a really nice weekend, wishing you lots of creative ideas, and I am looking forward to next week already. And in the meanwhile, on Tuesday, you can again drink a cup of coffee with me during coffee time with Erica, and I am going to tell you more about our plans for 2021. Thank you so much, ladies. Bye-bye.